So in, in 2009, the bottom fell out from under me. Uh, money was stolen, international wire transfers were diverted. Uh, even my, my furniture and stuff was, was gone. Uh, I, I was facing homelessness, bank accounts frozen, $25 in my pocket, uh, and, and, and I wasn't turning toward God, I was turning away from Him. I was angry at Him for letting me down. And, uh, and then God started to heal me. I, I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that, but I can tell you this, before you're 50, you will experience a tragic, life-altering event in your life of some kind or another. It will be you, it will be your children, I don't care how rich you are. I panicked, I mean nothing. My rock star dream, my money, nothing, none of my power, none of my gangster friends could, could stop that, that trauma from happening. I don't care how confident you are, I don't care how popular you are, I don't care what your resources are, you are going to have the rug pulled out from under you, and what are you going to do then? Well, it was ingrained in me to put my trust in the living God of heaven and earth. Yes, I was angry at him, but I still knew he was my father. You know, sometimes we get angry at our dads. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but yeah, uh, we, we get upset. Uh, particularly when we're teenagers, you know, we get upset at our parents and they get upset at us and we're bad to our parents and they're bad to us. Uh, it's a little way of, of preparing the, the parent's heart to let you go. You weren't designed to live in their house forever. Uh, so, you know, we all go through these things, but I'm telling you that God is faithful. And in 2010, I, I, about a year into this process, God spoke to me and he said, I'm going to give you back everything that was stolen from you, everything you've ever lost in your entire life. I'm going to give you that back and more. And more. And that's exactly the season of life that I've been living in. God has been blessing. God has been opening doors. Uh, you know, in 2016, I became the president of God Loves Kids. But I had stopped writing books in, in 2009. Uh, I didn't have the heart for it. I didn't have the heart, and I also didn't have the motivation for it. But I knew that God wanted me to do the message that is now before love. I knew that. I knew in my heart that someday that would have to be in a book. And, uh, and not only did I know that, I knew that it had to be a discipleship program. So you've been watching these shows and these programs and you don't understand what we're going to do with them. We're gonna take these programs and I'm gonna do 45 of them, minimum. And those 45 programs are gonna become 13 minute segments. And those 13 minute segments are going to go into a discipleship program. And th that discipleship program is gonna be available worldwide on an app. And, and when someone enrolls in the discipleship program, they're gonna watch a 13 minute segment every day for 90 days, and then they're going to contact their discipler, their mentor, and, uh, and answer two or three spiritual questions about what they've just watched and have a time of sharing with their mentor, and then their mentor will pray for them before the next day starts. It'll just be a few minute process, and here's what's going to happen. Uh, we, we are in, in the process of establishing, uh, personally buying uh, a place in Panama. We're opening an international headquarters in Panama, and we're going to be doing discipleship leadership trainings in Panama, not in the United States. Uh, that way people from around the world can easily come. Many people are not allowed to enter the United States who can come to Panama. Uh, and so we're gonna start doing this in Panama and do it in, in a way. So if you go through the discipleship program and then you go through the discipleship training, then you will be the guy on the other end of the app that somebody spends a few minutes every day talking to every 90 days. And, and we're going to allow our mentors to actually mentor two people at a time, at the most. That's gonna be the maximum number, two people. 
Why? Because we want them to know the people that they're mentoring. We want them to, to unconditionally accept and unconditionally love and maybe even meet some of their needs uh, as they're mentoring this person maybe halfway around the world uh, on this app. And then they are going to, to um, uh, qualify that person who spent 90 days watching 13 minute segments a day and spending time with a person. See, without relationship, there is no discipleship. Without relationship, there is no discipleship. I cannot disciple you by video. I can give you the concepts that lay the foundation of discipleship, but it takes a mentor to, to bring that discipleship home. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to do it in a powerful way. I'm going to write a book called Before Love. It's going to, based on these 45 programs. We're laying it down right now. What concepts are going in the book? Well, it's on the videos. So I'm going to write a, a, a book called Before Love. And then we'll, we will have, you know, Before Love teachings and Before Love conferences, that type of thing. Very, very standard. God's going to open doors using the book. Uh, and, and how this all came about. Why? Why the, the language that we're using before love? What is before love? Well, how this all came about is three years ago, uh, well, 2010, right after 2009, and right after God spoke to me that he was going to restore everything that, that Satan had stolen from me and more, anything that I'd lost in my entire life was going to be given back to me plus, plus, plus. Okay, and, uh, and so I went on a mission trip with my mom. I'm essentially carrying her bags and taking uh, videos, and I, I was doing Randy's job. Uh, and so, Randy, put your picture up here and let everybody know who you are. And Randy's my firewall, my, my video producer, and, and my buddy. And uh, so, but I was doing Randy's job for my mom. I'm carrying cameras around and I'm, I'm videotaping and loving on kids and making sure everybody gets where they're going, like herding cats. Uh, and, uh, and then anytime somebody needed to be disciplined or corrected, I was called upon so my mom could always be uh, mama lovey, you know? And so I would do the spanking in the ministry. And uh, we were riding in a car we were riding down the main road between Kampala and Entebbe, and God spoke to me as clear as day saying, I want to, you to establish a ministry in this area, and I want you to consolidate all the ministries you have in Uganda. We've been in Uganda almost 30 years at the time. All these ministries you have spread out all over Uganda, I want you to put them in one location, in one community. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Seven years later. Did you hear that? Seven years later. Because I'm looking at God in 2010 going, I'm not in charge. I'm not even on the board. I'm not a, I don't have an executive position. I'm writing newsletters and carrying cameras. Uh, I'm recovering. You know, I was wounded. I was hurt. I was recovering. I was, uh, you know, learning to forgive God and have him forgive me. And yet God still spoke to me in, my, in one of the darkest seasons of my life that there was a future and that I was to play a role in that future, a big role. Um, and so um, in 2017, we were in the process of buying a campus that was foreclosed. It was foreclosed from Islamic radicals who had used the campus to recruit uh, uh, young people to go to terrorist training camps. Some of those young people were even kidnapped and taken to terrorist training camps. Uh, and so we didn't know the dark history of this property. We didn't know the demonic past of this property, um, but we knew it was a good deal. We were buying it at about 30 cents on the dollar of what it was worth in the market. And so we, we put our uh, earnest money down, 26 days we had to come back to Uganda and close the deal. I had to have $130,000 in 26 days and God provided for us to do that. 
Uh, and so we went back, we took, uh, 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 we went to the bank. The bank said, oh, there's a little problem. Uh, the people haven't been evicted yet, even though we were supposed to do it 14 days ago. Uh, but it's what we'll have them out in two days. Well, that became a month long war with this group of people. They tried to have us arrested. They had spies following us everywhere we went. I wound up having to have six bodyguards with machine guns uh, with me uh, at, at almost all times. And it was, it was an amazing thing. And during this time, and I need to make this quick, but during this time, I wanted to give up. The bank was offering us our money back uh, and, and they would wash their hands of this deal. We would go home with our money and, uh, and I wanted to give up. And I, and I went to bed that night, determined to wake up the next morning, go to that bank and get my money back from that school. And during the night, God gave me a, a, a dream, a vision. And I, I can't give you all the details of that vision, but I, I was in a church and it was, it, it was live and it was vibrant and it was moving and it was growing. And, uh, and I was wondering why this church was successful. And then uh, uh, I was being guided by a, a young woman who was handicapped, but she moved like a ballerina. She, she was very graceful. And in fact, I don't think her feet ever touched the floor. She kind of floated through this whole campus and showing me around. And she started showing me all these young people living together uh, and, and being a community and operating together as one to minister to people all over this church. Uh, and then I woke up, but as, as I was going on this tour through this church, Every wall that I would look at would have the words before love on them, before love. I kept seeing before love. God's love for us existed before the creation of the universe. It was before existence that he loved us. And so I kept seeing this before love and I woke up and I knew that this was the title of the book. This was the title of the ministry. This was the discipleship program. All the pieces had fallen in place. Eventually, I realized that the church I was touring was our church in Uganda. And the lady who was leading me on that tour was my wife. And, and it was, it's been a spectacular road. Who launches an international television program during a, a, the midst of an international pandemic of COVID? Who does that? Who, who, does, you know, who does the things that we do over and over again? For what reason are we doing them? Well, it's not to get my name out there, I assure you, but God gave us a mandate uh, to, to disciple and to disciple over and over and over again uh, to people who do not know him. And so we are going to disciple and we want you to be a part of that journey, if you will. Come and be a part of Before Love. I want you to join our team. I want you to be a part of this ministry. And by watching this program, it's your first step.